Some of y'all dead, and I'm not gonna fight with you tonight. Now look at your neighbor on the left and the right. And say, is the man of God up singing? Is he talking about praise? The Bible says, let everything to have what? Do you love the praising? Do you love the praising? Clap, clap, clap! Yeah. What you love to do. And because God is the greatest power, tell three people I'll never be defeated.
You may be seated. Hey, my little kosha. Praise our God. Come here, Sister Lily. Praise God. I'm not going to pray for her. Hallelujah. How you doing? I just want you to tell your testimony. Uh, give me a mic. Who got the mics? Hobi Ashanda. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm coming. Hold on, hold on. You, you ready, ain't you? Holland the Ohosha. Shandi Osia. Make Yando. Ilele Osha. Tamandele Kosaya. And the Osia. Amen. If they don't talk back to you like that, they ain't got nothing. You don't leave me talking in tongues by myself. You talk back to me. Um, um, God bless you for being here. And uh, we're grateful to the Lord for what he's going to do in this place tonight. I, 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 but I want people to know that folk don't just come because we don't get results. Look down your road, say, we get results around here. Amen. Even folk get in trouble, they come on back. Because I need results. Testify. Praise him. Amen. Amen. It's been about three years ago now. And um, uh, I took on a second job, praise the Lord. I'm sorry, but I'm so used to saying that. Amen. But I took on a second job because I needed help at home. But nevertheless, we got off early one night. And I come home, and there was another woman coming out my house. I worked it from 3 to 12 o'clock. And that was in central time, so the time was different. So we got off, I got off a little earlier. But nevertheless, me and my husband got into a fight. I just walked up to him and said, I'm just tired of the way you treating me. And he kicked me. And we started fighting. And he threw me down on the chair some kind of way. And you know how it is. You just feel it around. First thing I felt, I grabbed it. Because he had to get off me. And I hit him in the head. I hit him in the head. And um, he started bleeding. So he said he's going to call the police. I said, call the police. I said, I don't care. I'm tired. Call the police. Uh, a little bit ahead before COVID came, I didn't say this last time, before COVID came, I had talked with Prophet about my husband in uh, St. Mary. And you know Prophet. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I stayed there anyway. <laughs> I stayed there anyway. And so, but right before COVID came, I went and filed for a divorce because I knew it was leading to this right here. But anyway, they put me out my house. After they, they locked me up, I stayed in jail all night. I even got mad with God and said, why? And when I thought about it after a while, I said, why not? So I stayed there in jail. So I got burned out the next day. And I went home. But the judge told me I couldn't go home. And I owned my own business. And I had a room in the, my business. About so big, anyway. Anyway, I had to put a, a let out chair, like a look recline in there, so I could have somewhere to sleep. So I stayed in that building almost a year. And I come to church one Sunday, and Prophet called me up. He said, Sister Lila, I know you're not going to hear this. I said, oh, God. I looked at Sister Joe. I said, oh, God. So anyway, I walked up there just like this. Walked on up there. And he said, all the other stuff going to be all right. They're going to throw it out. I said, okay. So I'm waiting now. What else he got to say? Then he said, the Lord said, go home. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. But nevertheless, on his word, he's my pastor. I got to be obedient. I didn't ask no question why. We didn't need to tell you nothing. I went home. Packed my little stuff out the store, and I went back home. And he let me in. But time passed on. They kept going to court, going to court. I kept going to court. 
and they and they every time that they say they're gonna give me 20 years I say I ain't doing no 20 years and they said well you could take it on paper I said I'm almost 60 years old what I look like bringing you money every morning peeing in a cup I said I'm not doing that I said my pastor said they gonna throw it out so next time I went to the, they went to court again they dropped it down to 15 I said ma'am I done told you I'm not doing this now you can stop doing this I said because God gonna work it out and she got mad she said don't say God gonna do it I said what you talking about she said I done heard that a lot I said but you won't know my God and I said I said I said my pastor's name prophet Brian Conn if he said gonna work out it gonna work out so they dropped it all the way down to a misdemeanor and one day I tried to call him to tell him that but some kind of way we couldn't get in touch. So I still said, I'm not going to take it. She said, it's just uh, 12 months on paper, and, uh, and you take an angry management class. I said, I ain't mad. I said, he kicked me, and I, and I had to defend for myself. And so nevertheless, nevertheless, I was at work one day, and I had my husband got Alzheimer's now. So I got cameras set up. So somebody went to my house that I did not recognize. And I went, I locked my door and I went home. And I went in my house and I asked them, I said, who are you? And he said, you need to see your lawyer. I said, I don't need to see my lawyer for you to tell me what you're doing in my house. He said, I'm the DA and I come to take, talk to your husband. I said, okay. I stood there like that. So he said, you got to get out. I said, you mean to tell me I got to get out my own house? So the Lord spoke to me, told me to go back to work. I just politely went on back to work. So when I got back to work, and I, we were supposed to be have court the next day. So I called my lawyer. I said, I said it's 8 o'clock. I said, what we going to do? Oh, they throw it out. Hey! Hurry up, Hallelujah. I tell you, one day I had a surgery done on both of my knees. I got one one year and one the next year. I said, Lord, I need somebody to be a leader. A few years ago, my leader had died before I met him. So I went online, and all in my mind was, well, I need a binding. And that's I heard people talk, but didn't know it, just going to pull it up. But I could never, all I pull up with this man right here. And I said, and I started following this man. I couldn't work, and I was on a check, fixed income. Everywhere he went, I can go, God made a way. I went. I even came to Charlotte when you was in the, I think the Bojangles arena. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of way. Ovens out of I became a partner, and I heard him in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta, we got baptized. He said he gonna, might get a church. I told that girl behind me, I said, I don't care where you're going, I'm going. And just to show, he got one in St. Mary. And that's about four hour drive. Before I got in this situation with my husband, having to take care of my husband, I was there every Sunday. Now I'm having to take care of my husband, even though y'all know I don't want to do it. But I got to be obedient. I got to do it. I just got to do it. I got to do it. But, but just because of what he told me, he told me it was going to be all right. And I took him at his word. Couldn't no devil in hell come shake me. They tried all they can do. It took three years. If he told you something, wait on it. Hold on, I shot. It took three years. Three years before they even throw it out. But they throw it out. I didn't have to pay no money. I didn't go back to jail. And I'm here tonight. You want to dance? Huh? Somebody help a praise. Look at three people say just like that. Hey, 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 hey. Are y'all gonna dance? You got five seconds. Put in a dance right there. Come on, help.
Be seated. Tell somebody just like that. If God said, he going to do it. Because he a man of his word. He do what he say. And guess what he don't do? He don't tell no lies. If he makes you a promise, only thing you got to do is make sure he said it. Because if he said it, shall he not do it? If he spoke it, shall he not make it good? I believe it's going to happen for somebody just like that. We thank God for all these preachers. Can we give all the preachers a great big God bless you? On the podium and uh, front row. Can we give our guest psalmist a great big God bless you? He came just at our call. You know, um, Brother Fred was supposed to be here. Uh, something always wrong with his plane. I mean, always just under, it's a demon on his plane. So, um, so as a result, so you should have did it. Amen. So, um, so uh, we called in and um, Pastor Vincent, and he came. And we're so grateful that he came to celebrate with us. Can we give him a? But I know he'll be. That's enough. I like that. You know, I told him when I saw him sometimes, I said, oh, I know your song. You know, I don't be learning people's songs until it's been out about three years. You know, I, I, I be behind schedule, you know, because y'all know I sing the same song. So I'm, I'm still in the 90s. Say amen. Amen. I'm still singing. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Barack. Barack. I'm still saying that. <laughs> Yada. Talk. What? Lift up your hands. Mean to sing. Kara, come on. Kara. <laughs> Sit down. So I'm still there. I didn't make it out. I, I got, I, I got, I, I got stuck. You know, I'm, I'm still singing them songs. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of King. We sing the praises to our King. Give Him glory. Give Him. I'm still stuck. All of my life, I never known you. Oh, you remain the same and wonderful as your. All of my life, all of I'm still there.
Cause the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. What? He lets me rest in the meadows grass. Then he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. You say it. Come on. Huh. That's why I'm saying. What? Say. Sit down. Won't he make you? I believe in Jesus Christ. He's the giver of all life. What? From heaven he came down. Oh, what joy I found. No, you were not there. You don't know when or where. What the Lord has done for me. What? Gave me the victory. I'm a believer. Hey! I'm a believer. Say yeah! I'm stuck there. But I'm learning new stuff. I'm getting it slowly but surely. But I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm way back in there. I don't know why. Come on. He can't. I don't know. Get it I am redeemed. We're way back. Bought with a price. Jesse Dixon. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you, Whose I am, just who's I am. Tell, tell, I am, I am. All right. Amen. That's that's good music. I said, that's good music. It reaches to the
I'm ready to preach. Melodies from heaven. What? Rain down. Y'all remember that? the phone. Sit down for just a moment. We again do honor the Lord for his presence and for what he's going to do. Something supernatural is going to take place. God dumped in here last night and every round goes I sing praises to your name everybody come on oh Lord praises to your name to your name it is and greatly to be praised I sing praises to your name oh Lord to your name for your it is and everyone standing for just one moment everyone standing lift those hands for the next 30 seconds open your mouth and tell him what he means to you talk to him talk to him yes the world We'll bow down and say you are God. Every come on. Bow down and so let's start right now. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Why would we lift your hands and say, King of Glory? both hands and tell him, King of glory. King of glory. Oh. Just wanna, just wanna be with you. Come on, sing it to him. Just wanna, just wanna be with you. Lift both hands with no music and tell him, King of glory. Start from the top. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. We'll bow down. We'll bow down and say you. you are God. Every man. Every man. Come on. We'll bow, bow down. down and say you are he. So let's start right now. So let's start right 
Why would we wait? Everybody, tell him. Tell him. King of glory. Hey. Feel. Just one. Just one. Tell him again, hey, King of Glory. Feel just wanna, just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory. King of glory. Fill this place. Hey. Just want to be with you. Everybody. Just want to be with you. One more time, tell him, King of glory. King of Just wanna. Just wanna be with you. Hallelujah. Just wanna be. Clap those hands for Jesus all over this room. Hug three people before you sit down and tell them I'm excited about your future. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ilolo Shandabasia. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Clap those hands for Jesus one more time. I say for Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Of course, we came in here on last night and God began to deal with us. Thank you about how the church in this hour, uh, you are operating in his stead. We are ambassadors because whatever he was, it's very important for you to come into that revelation. Know that you are not just anybody. You are a new creature. Old things are passed away. He said, behold. That means look at him. All things have become brand new. All of that happened because everything that God does, he does with his word. God's word is his creative material. Whenever a carpenter gets ready to build something, I'm sure he needs a hammer. He needs nails. But whenever God does anything, he does it with his word. Genesis chapter 1, he made it very clear. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Not only did he do that in Genesis chapter 1, but he came right back around in John chapter 1 and said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All, 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 all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Well, he just told you who made it. It was the word. And if you can ever get a hold to the word, you can do anything. I heard him say in Isaiah 55, my word shall not return unto me void. So I am concerned uh, about my generation of preachers. I'm not the authority, just bear with me in the Holy Ghost. I'm concerned about my generation of preachers because there's not much great emphasis on the word. There's a lot of emphasis on dancing, shouting, 
running around the church and screaming. But you need to know what you're shouting about. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But that word is going to abide forever. Say amen to that. The word of God, you're going to have to get it. Once you get a hold of the word of God, you'll recognize that the things you're going through are not new. A lot of times, one way the enemy gets us is he make you feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through. But I believe it's Ecclesiastes that said ain't nothing new under the sun. And the word of God is full of the sufferings of a lot of people. And it becomes a challenge to the faith of a lot of people because there are so many people who are, are bothered by this thing in theology called theodicy. Theodicy is why do bad things happen to good people? That, that's a legitimate question. It's a question that people come up with. Why do people suffer? Why do people go through all of this stuff? Why is there so much pain? And as a result of the pain that people go through, when you don't have a good grasp on the word of God, the next question becomes, is there a God? Come on, y'all, that's true. We're living in an age of information. And there's an age now where so many people are questioning the, the validity, the authenticity of who God is. And they ask questions like that. If there's a God, why is there so much pain? Why do people suffer? And I, I think that we have to stop acting like those are not good questions. Most people say, well, the reason people are going through what they're going through in the world is because of the government that we're under. But we know that that's not true. Because you can have a good president and people are still suffering. Amen. Doesn't matter who the government is. Don't matter who's in charge. But Jesus came. And when he got here, he said, I came to preach good news. Y'all quiet in here. I get in a lot of trouble now with most of those who are raised in the holiness and the Pentecostal circle, how I was raised, because we do a lot of preaching everything but good news. Amen. We, we tell everybody what they're not instead of telling them what they are. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would should not perish but have what? That's verse 16. Verse 17 say, for he sent not his son into the world to what? Condemn the world. Well, that the world through him might be say, Look at somebody and say, God's in love with you. I know you don't want to hear that. I know that they want you to feel like God's mad and God going to get you. But I come to tell you the devil ain't nothing but a lie. His thoughts towards you are good and not evil. And he will give you what? An expected end. I need you to slap another neighbor and tell him God is in love with you. He came with good news. Want to really, don't want to really get into that, but that word good news in the Greek is not just good news, it's a hyperbole. It's a superlative. If you understand that word in the Greek, it's not just good news, but it's too good to be true news. When somebody hear you preach about how simple this is, their response should be, that's too good to be true. I know you want to make it hard, but the way of the transgressor. But take my yoke and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is like, would you look at your neighbor and tell him God's going to make your way easy. Come on, prophesy out of somebody with a little authority. I don't know who that was for, but God told me to tell you that hard stuff is over. This is your season where you're going to experience easy. He came with good news. I'm coming. And the reason he came with good news is because people were suffering. People were going through. People had all kind of problems. And again, ain't nothing new under the sun. 
There was a story told of a certain man in the Bible. I don't know if you remember that. But there was a man traveling. And on the journey, the Bible said that that man was attacked by robbers. You remember that? Yeah. They almost killed him. The Bible say they stole everything he had and left him to die. The Bible say when the priest came, he walked away. The church who should have helped him <laughs> turned him away. But the Bible say then came a Samaritan. Wasn't very religious. Wasn't didn't keep all the rules, but he was a Samaritan. And the Bible declares that that man picked him up and cared for him. And the Bible said, which one of these men was a neighbor to the one that was beaten by the robbers? The answer, of course, was the Samaritan. And he said, you make sure you do likewise. All I'm trying to tell you is Jesus was telling the story of robbers in his day. Thieves ain't nothing new. People been stealing a long time. These ain't new problems. Even Jesus. The Bible lets us know that when Jesus died and was buried, the Bible says that they put a rock over the hole where Jesus was buried, and the Bible lets us know that three days later, he got up. And the soldiers who were commissioned to guard that tomb. The Bible declares that when the angel came, they fell. You remember that? And they told the priest that Jesus came out of the grave. But guess what the Bible say happened? The leaders offered them money to say that the disciples overpowered them and took the body. All I'm trying to tell you is that we've been had corrupt leadership. I don't want to make nobody mad, but look at somebody and say, Trump ain't nothing new. Whoever it is, whoever it is, whoever it is, leaders, presidents, corrupt leadership is nothing new. Not only that, Paul was arrested. The Bible lets us know that when Paul was arrested, the governor sent for him several times. And the Bible said that the reason the governor sent for him is he expected Paul to offer him money to be let go. These are not new problems. But I heard Jesus say, ye are the light of the world. Say, I am the light of the world. And you don't need a light in a light place. You need light in a dark place. You're the light of the world. And if there's going to be change, you're the one who's going to have to bring it. But you can't bring it through your words. You got to use his word. Because his word is creative material. And if I get a hold to the word of God, somebody slap your neighbor and say, I can change anything. Would you say that with a little more power? Tell somebody, I can change anything. I don't care how bad your situation is. The word of God can change it. Well, what was God's perfect will? What was on his mind? When he created me. What is on his mind? What does he think of us? Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14. Just want to read that real quick. And I pray that we can all read it together. What does it say? Come on. Uh-huh. Yeah. It shall be Keep reading. Uh-huh. The Bible is letting us know that whatever God creates can stand the test of time. If I had time, I would get into this, but all I'm trying to tell you is God don't do something and change it. Anything God does is eternal. 
because he already saw what was going to happen before it happened. Does that make sense? Which means when he created you and put his hand upon your life, he did not create you to fail. Come on, come on, come on here. Lay hands on yourself say, I'm not created to fail. I want to keep going further. Not only were you not created to fail, but he didn't even, uh, he didn't even plan on your heart failing. Your lungs ain't supposed to fail. Y'all quiet here. I know I'm making you mad. Nothing wrong in your body is supposed to be wrong in your body. That wasn't the original plan. Say amen to that. Amen. Give me Genesis chapter 1. Real quick. Verse 31. Look at what it says. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was what? So everything God made, he didn't make no mistakes. Say, I am, I am. very good. You didn't say that with confidence, amen. Because, see, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Try that again. I am very good. Very good. When he made it, when he made me, he made me very good. Well, why am I not experiencing the very good that he's promised me? I know people won't tell y'all that, but I don't believe God ordained you to suffer. I don't believe that. The suffering of the believer, I believe, is persecution. Because if you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. Amen. I just believe that. That's just what I believe. Because God said no man who gives up houses and land, he said, I'll give it back to you. In this life and in the life to come, but it's going to come with something. Persecution. I don't believe it's God's will for you to be sick. The devil be damned. God ain't getting no glory out of me being broke. It's a sad testimony to be his child and not have no child support. your neighbor I belong, I belong to God well why am I not experiencing what I'm supposed to have your mentality could be the problem your mentality can be the problem and a lot of times it's the problem because of the way you was raised we don't come up with the right mentality. A lot of times we're surrounded by people who, who have bad mentality. And here's the problem. You can have good mentality in certain areas of your life, but have bad mentality in other areas of your life. Some of you have faith for salvation, but you don't have faith for healing. I know it's true. Some of you have faith for healing, but don't have faith for money. And the reason you don't have faith for it is you think they were all three different works. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. When he saved you, he healed you. Come on, talk back to me. When he saved you, he prospered you. That blood on Calvary's cross took care of somebody saw everything. But your mentality got to change. And it happens because if you're a child, and you're grown around people that ain't got no faith. Who taught you fear. Who, who, who taught you you got to fall apart at a certain age. The devil is a liar. Somebody named Caleb said, I'm just as strong now. 
Look at somebody and say, I can get my stuff now. My grandmother, a couple of months ago, broke her ankle, 81 years old, broke her ankle, and uh, fell, and uh, she back there walking now, but she broke her ankle. But the therapist people came, and they had her in a wheelchair, and they was trying to show her how to do stuff in the wheelchair, and she went off on her. <laughs> they said, we trying to help you. She said, you trying to help me in a wheelchair. I'm not going to be in no wheelchair. Y'all don't get what I'm saying. The older I am, the stronger I'm going to be. Tell somebody, I'll never lose my mind. Say that with confidence. Say, I'll never have Alzheimer's. I'll never have dementia. God ain't gave me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a... Your mentality got to change. Some of you are low because your conversation is low. You hang with people who are low. And as a result of your low conversation, they transfer their fears to you. I was telling somebody the other day, most of you in here always get on Mother Simon. A lot of people in here are afraid of dogs. But never been bit. And you know, Mother Simon be speaking in tongues and shouting and everything. But when that dog come, of course, she by. She done got better, though. But she transferred that demon to her daughter. Praise God. <laughs> she transferred the fear. Now, here's the thing. Never been bit by the dog, but afraid of the dog. Because what they can do. But you've been bit by people. And you're sitting next to one of them right now. Look down your road, say they do bite. That fear becomes transferred. But only God can tell us about his creation. That's why one of the things that I think we need to make sure we do when people get saved and come to the altar, one of the first things we need to do is make sure folk get the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know you came to the altar and got saved, but you need that life of God in you. Say amen to that. Be because it is the Holy Ghost who becomes your teacher who teaches you about the life that you just received. So he comes around in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and said, I beg, I plead, I implore, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your what? Come on, a living sacrifice. Holy, come on. Acceptable unto God, which is your? Verse 2, and be not to this world, but be ye. Hold on. He's not talking to sinners. He's talking to Christians. And he's telling Christians that you can't be like the world. No, y'all don't want to hear that no more. I know we knew covenant, but we're still sanctified. Look at somebody and say, you can't be like the world. Be not conformed to this world. He said, but the only way you're going to not be like the world is you must be transformed by the what? So he said, your mind has to change. Because as a man, come on, so is he. I'm saved. But I still have a worldly mind. The Bible calls it carnal. And the reason I have a carnal mind is because of what I feed myself. 
Y'all ain't talking to me. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts. So God said, you don't have the ability to change you. So I'm going to give you some material to accomplish the change in your mind. And the material that I'm going to give you to change your mind is the word of God. So now I have to tell myself that everything I've been taught contrary to the word is a lie. Y'all got quiet in here. I'm talking about what Big Mama taught you. What your daddy taught you. So what if some don't believe? Romans 3 and 3. Does their unbelief make the faith of God or the word of God of none effect? God forbid. Let God be and your mama be a lie. The word don't change for your family. The word don't change for your children. Why are y'all not talking back to me here? The church must be the church. And we must stop changing stuff to accommodate people's lifestyle. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but God called us to be different. We don't operate like the world. Isn't that right? Save folk don't date sinners. Church got quiet. Be ye not unequally with who? Unbelievers. I didn't write it. That's 2 Corinthians 6.14. We don't do that. We different. I think it is different. We don't cheat on our income taxes like the world. We don't claim children that ain't ours. We don't lie to get SBA loans. I get in the word and the reason I get in the word is so I can change my thinking but why are people failing and so many people will say stuff like certain mindset well you can't win everything that's what you say sometime you win sometime you lose that's the way people think and you grab that from the world. That's not Bible. Thanks be to God. Who always causes us to what? Triumph. Tell your neighbor I'm not a loser. I can't fail. I said I can't fail. I can't go under. I don't care what it looked like. It got to work for my good. Because I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. That's what the word say. So you got to think like the world, like the word of God tells you to think. But he said, be transformed. But the only way you're going to be transformed is you got to change the way you think. You can't think. That at 65, you got to get arthritis. Tell your neighbor, I ain't falling apart. Would you say that with confidence? Don't be scared. I don't care if they get mad at you. (laughs) 
You listen to people who tell you that certain things come with age. But if that's true, everybody at that age would experience the same thing. I ain't got to have it because my mama had it. I have to tell my grandmama that. My grandma loved me. All of them got sugar. But I ain't going to have sugar. So that's what my thinking is. And I don't have what you say. Amen. But what you do is you start waiting on it. And the thing you fear the most. Job 3.25 comes unto you. You start fearing a certain age. Everybody in your family divorced, so you think you're going to get one. All the people in your family unhappy, so you start preparing for it. And you even look at man through the lens of your mama. I know I'm preaching good, ain't getting no amen. You start judging people through the lens of other folk experience. But you got to change. You're thinking, I'm not going under. Somebody with confidence say, I will not fail. I will not fail. Say it again. I will not fail. Say it again. I will not fail. Now add it and say, my children won't fail. My children won't fail. Say, my family won't fail. My family won't fail. Say, nothing. nothing. Nobody, Nobody connected, to connected to me will fail. will fail. I don't care what has been programmed for your life. Tonight, I reprogram it. So I don't believe I got to die sick and beat up. I go from glory to glory. My life keep getting better and better. When he bring me over one thing, I know he's preparing me for something else. See, God wants you to, holla my shot, I just saw that. I just saw that. Just saw something in the spirit. He said, I want you to act like Abraham. Your, your testimony got to be as far as your eyes can see. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but God said you got to change your vision, change your, I don't care what your economy is, ain't no limitation can stop you. If you can see yourself out, you coming out of this thing. If you can see yourself being the head and not the tail, that's what you're going to be. Tell yourself, I see myself in another place. But the question, the question is, what can you see? And see, that's why you got to hang around people that got more than you. Because when you expose yourself to greater, it changes your appetite. And you start wanting more for yourself. Look at somebody said, you got to change your friends. Change, change your association. Change who you hang around. Get away from these folk that's been on. Oh, I'm finna make y'all mad. Get away from poverty thinking. Get away from people that all their life uh, been from paycheck to paycheck. Some of you on a fixed income. The devil is a liar. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. Tell somebody. I am. I am that I am. That I am. Sit down. I'm coming. Not ready. What do you see? Halamashande. I don't care if a prophet come to you and tell you they see something bad. Change it. 
I'm about to talk back to me in here. I don't care if you tell me you see something going to happen to my son. The devil is a liar. I turn that thing in prayer and say, you can't touch my children. Somebody say, change it. You don't got to take it. You ain't got to take it. Hoba Shalia. Hello, Bo Sikanda. This going to be the best year of your life. I prophesy that the last six months are going to be greater than the first six months. But I need you to shout in advance. Be seated. Be seated. Colossians chapter 4. If you can see it, you can change it. If you can see it, you can turn it. And I declare over your life today that God's enlarging your territory. But you got to see it. You won't stop believing God for more until you get exposed to it. I didn't believe God for first class tickets when I was riding on the bus. I ain't know you could fly, I thought you had to catch a bus. But I was only limited by my experience. Some of you are too insecure to be around folk that got more than you. You're too insecure. You can't be in a room unless you the boss. You can't be in a room unless you in charge. Amen. 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 You look nice. Why you? Why? What, what's wrong with telling your sister, brother, they look good? Why you got to hate on them because they look good? You got to look at them and say, girl, you wearing that dress. Uh, baby, I can't wear it like you. You got something on you. Girl, girl, you wearing that. You wearing that. See, y'all got to look at me and say, you wearing that robe. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to be able to celebrate other folk breakthroughs. Would you do me a favor, look at Psalm 11 and right, say, I celebrate you. <laughs> Somebody look nice, and instead of you complimenting them, you wonder, where you get that money from? How, how they bought that? How you can afford that? Haters. Big wine and say, haters make me greater. Colossians chapter 4. Somebody shout, I am a success. I am a success. Now, let me tell you something. I didn't start saying that now. I, I, I was saying that as a teenager. Amen. I, was a teen, I was a teenager saying, I own Mercedes. And they come to my mama. They say, he got a Mercedes. Mama said, I don't know what he talking about. <laughs> I pray for you, son. Well, I want you to get a lion spirit, son. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I was saying it be, 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 before. I told you truth before time looked like a lie. Come on here. I heard God call Abraham father when he didn't have no kids. But he's God who called those things which be not as though they were. See, I am a success. I am debt free. I don't owe nobody nothing. And every room I walk in, I shift the atmosphere. You better know that. You better know. 
You better walk in stores. Hanamoshiah. Letting them know the only reason you got business right now is because I'm in here. See, y'all, y'all don't talk like that. You better tell your house the reason we blessed because I'm in this family. And they were talking about I'm saved too. Yeah, but me and God got something different. I mean, I know you saved, but it's something on me. See, y'all like y'all scared to say that. I got something on me. I mean, I, I ain't all that, but I, 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 God crazy about me. I know he crazy about me because if I was him, I would have threw me away a long time ago. But every time I try to leave him, he keep coming back and getting me. Say it again. I am a success. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. I'm not going to rush. We're going to get this. We're going to get this. I told you you're not getting no rest this week. Don't come here, Thomas. I'm tired. You're supposed to be. But times are refreshing. I'm going to come in his presence. Look at what Paul was praying. Epaphras, which is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer that you may stand what? And in the what? The Bible said that he was interceding for the people to be perfect and complete. That word perfect is teleos. It means maturity. The prayer of Epaphras concerning those people was he wanted them to grow up. It's one of the greatest battles I have with y'all around here. You're childish. You speak in tongues but don't speak to each other. You holding grudges. I told somebody the other day, I told somebody, do you know how complicated it is, especially when you ain't grace? You know how hard it is to deal or how tough it is to console a crying baby? Because you don't know what he wants. That's how some of y'all are. I don't know what you want. One minute you happy, next minute you ain't. One minute you want a pastor, next minute you don't. You're quiet in here. One minute you committed, next minute you're not. One minute you know you're supposed to be somewhere, and the minute something don't happen the way you want to happen, you act like a child, you throw temper tantrums, and I'm the wrong leader because I don't babysit because what you babysit don't grow. Shout to your neighbor and say, grow up! Nobody going to stroke you. You need to grow up. You've been saved 20 years. And somebody got to hold your hand on how to deal with offense. When offenses must needs be come for the sake of the gospel. I mean, come on back. Y'all shut down on me. You got to grow up. There's a place of maturity. Amen. You still calling me? You still, you, you got, I'm, I'm not throwing off, but I'm, I'm going to say it. You, you still need your pastor to work out differences between two grown adults? Two people grown. And say they got the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you what you got. A form of godliness. What you got ain't real. Until you can love the person who agitates you. I know I'm safe. 
because you ticked me off, but I love you. I'm upset with you, but I genuinely love you. It ain't fake. It ain't fake. It's not fake. Ain't nobody got to hold me back because my flesh is crucified. I beat my body under subjection. Got to grow up. Got to be mature. Hallelujah. I'm commanded to love you. I'm commanded to smile at you when I know you're trying to hurt me. I'm commanded to love you when I heard your conversation. When I saw your post and knew you was throwing off on me. I'm not a backbiter, I'm a face biter. Stop talking about folk behind their back. And if you got an issue with them, confront them in love. Confront them in love. Man. Never got to worry about it. If I got a problem with you, I'll tell you. Tell you I don't like you, your spirit off. You didn't handle that right. Sit down. He said, I want you to grow up. I want you to become mature. So tough for me. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean this in a diminutive way, but it's very tough for me. Because there are things that I learned in the infancy of my salvation. That I don't understand how people saved 20 years still dealing with it. Where was your pastor? What was you doing in church? Who was babying you? Who let you get up there and minister with no character? Who promoted you because you were gifted, but you didn't even know how to handle people? We got to stop just putting folk up because they gifted. Because they were poison the church. Can you submit when you're not in charge? Can you be faithful if you don't get to lead no song? And be faithful without an attitude. Sit down, I'm coming. I want you to come to a place of maturity because the Bible declares as long as you're a child, you ain't no different from a slave. Isn't that what the Bible say? So you're struggling. You're struggling with sickness, struggling with pain, struggling with infirmity, struggling with all these problems. And it's such a tough thing when you're dealing with Christianity because so many people are trying to become mature without the word. Your food for your growth is the word of God. It's not, here I am to worship. Here I am to buy. That don't mean nothing. Some of y'all are excellent worshipers. You are good at it. But ye worship what you know not. You don't know who you worship. You got worship down, I mean, you, you good at worship. You can clean up the flow, worship. You can do all of that, but can't submit to authority. You can worship, but can't obey your husband. You can worship, but you can't love your wife. Why y'all ain't shouting no more? And it's because you're not in the word. Wives, wives, don't submit to your husband. Submit to the word. Because if you submit to the word, guess who you're going to submit to? Your husband. Husband, don't be sitting up there talking about something. I ain't going to submit to my wife. You ain't got to submit to her. Submit to the word. And if you submit to the word, you're going to love her like Christ loved the church. 
But because you don't have no word in you, the Holy Ghost is never able to bring anything back to your. How you going to remember what you never knew? Wish you would look down your own and say, we got to grow up. I told y'all, I love dancing. I love shouting. I love the Pentecostal church. I don't want to be CCM. I know all our church now won't sound like the other folk. I don't want to sound like them. I'm glad to be sanctified. I'm glad I come up in holiness. I ain't doubting about the way. I, I, I know this is right. I know it ain't nothing like the sanctified church. I don't want to be like nobody else, but I'm tired of us doing it and ain't got nothing. You will sit in here and dance and walk right out of here and get into it with somebody. You just got all off the floor crying. <laughs> you ain't crying because of God. You crying because you're embarrassed. You crying because you got demons. You crying because somebody won't console your folly. We got to get the word in us. I said, we got to get the word in us. Now, I said all the time, you say, you sanctify, you feel the Holy Ghost, you say. You're a Christian. And most of you in here, I don't have to ask you, I know it. Most of you in here have never read the whole Bible. Not just y'all, preachers too. They read to preach. But we don't supposed to read to preach. Man shall not live. But by every. That's how we live. You don't study the word to preach, you study the word to live. The Muslims know your Bible. And they Bible. You can't have a discussion with them. Because you don't know nothing. Scripture come up, you got to go look on Google. If Google went around, some of y'all be in trouble. I know it's in there somewhere. Let me find it. Jesus. He said, I want you to be perfect, and I want you to be complete. Plurum, to be full of feel. He said, I don't just want you to grow up, but I want you to be in a place where you don't need nothing. Come on. He said, I want you to become so mature that you're brought to a place where you become so full that you don't need nothing. That you don't come to church for a fix. And don't get mad if the pastor don't prophesy to you. Because you don't learn how to prophesy to yourself. I'm mature. I'm mature. I don't just come to church. This, this is a rebuke to Jacksonville Church. I don't just come to church when the pastor is there. This is for Jacksonville. This is what Jacksonville like to do. I don't just come to church when the pastor there because I'm not connected to his flesh but most of you do because that's what you are connected to I'm the pastor of this church it ain't about a man it's about the word and I don't know who God going to talk through. And a lot of times you miss your greatest breakthrough because you want to judge the vessel that it came through. James chapter 1 verse 4. Hurry up. God wants you perfect and complete. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 1 and 4. But let patience have a what? That ye may be and come on. Now in this text, it's really in more reference to your body. God, God said, I want you in a place where you have no defect. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Every sickness in your body is drying up. Amen. Amen. But, 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 but if you don't believe that God wants you to have the best, you're not going to have it. Amen. So one of the greatest, the hardest things to do is trying to convince people that your sickness Ain't a test from God. Right. God ain't making me sick to test me. Because I came that you might have. The thief cometh to steal, kill, and what? I came that you might have. But I got to get you to agree. I got, I, I got to get you to agree that God don't want you broke. See how quiet they get? Tell somebody, God want me to have a whole heap of money. Now, if you argue with me about it, it ain't going to happen for you. Because the anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. So you hear people sitting up on, on, on TV preaching. Prosperity ain't from God. Don't believe in this message of prosperity. That say you can do this and you can do that. And guess what? They won't have it. Because they have what they say. Well, you ain't supposed to care about money. They're hypocrites. Why do they work? Ain't nobody working because you. Just, I just love to work. All these folks, time and time, don't worry about money. Got jobs. Working overtime. Part time, double time, and ain't giving God no time. Look down your road and say, you're going to have a lot of money. Say, God wants you to have a lot of money. All I'm trying to get you to do is accept that God wants you to have. That's all faith is. Faith is agreeing with God. Faith is accepting that whatever God said is, is. Whatever he said was, was. And whatever he said will be, what? Will be. So if any man be in Christ, he is a what? So is that what you are? Yes. Hello, is that what you are? Yes. Give me 3 John. Give me 3 John 2. A letter written to Gaius. Salutation. 3 John 2. Look at what he said. Next verse. Next verse. Read it. What does it say? Come on. Uh huh. Now, do that sound like a God who's making people sick? No. But He said, if I can get your soul to prosper, then I can make you prosper in every area of your life. That's God's dream for me. Amen. Let me go. See, I need y'all to get to a place. Well, you don't accept headaches. Amen. I don't accept fevers. I don't accept cold. Y'all don't, y'all ain't hearing me in here. Look at somebody and say, I don't accept that. You ain't got to be sick. You ain't got to have allergies. It's allergy season, not for me. I have this even for you, but it's not for me because I'm not conformed to this. Wow. It's flu season. I ain't getting the flu. 
And how many, hallelujah, I felt God. And how many people know that when you talk like that, you're going to be tested. Go to saying God, your healer, and see don't the enemy come after your body. Y'all ain't talking back to me in here. Go to saying God, your provider, and don't it seem like your money go to drying up. But with no money, you got to say, my God shall supply. I don't change my confession because of my situation. Say, I am healed. Say, I am healed. See, we got to grow up. We got to go to another class. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Hurry up. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be done in a minute. Halomo Shike. Elandalo Sia. Salabashatioma. Mene Kile. Librostuli Fiankele Beklestalaya. Ha 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 ha. Somebody's about to get something here tonight. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. And my speech. And my preaching was not with what? I'm not throwing off. But most of our preachers today can't quote this. Because their speech and their preaching is with enticing words. And they lack demonstration. No power. Paul said, when I came, you had heard enough messages. When I got there, the priest had been preaching. But you didn't need no more preaching. You needed to halabashaya. You needed a demonstration of power. And we got preachers who can preach but can't cast the devil out of nobody. Nobody's saying nothing. But these signs shall follow them that. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to lay hands on the sick. You're going to speak with new tongues. You can drink any deadly thing and it will not harm you. Look at somebody and say we need the miraculous. We don't be scared to say that. Find you another neighbor and tell them we need the miraculous. There's a whole lot of talkers and anybody can talk. But God said, he, Paul said, I didn't come talking. I came moving in power. Because if you saw me moving in power, it'll kill your human argument. I prophesy that there's a people that God's about to raise up that your shadow going to heal people. Tell three people, get in my shadow. My shadow will cure you. My shadow will make that headache go away. You don't even understand. If you touch me, every demon on you got to come off of you. Because anything I come in contact with, I shift it when I touch it. Verse 5, he said, sit down. He said, there's one reason that I moved in power. Is I didn't want your faith to stand in the wisdom of men. But in the what? But in the what? But in the what? Look down your road, say we need power. I don't know if you remember Hullabal Hosha. I don't know if you remember when John got locked up. John got locked up and he got a little offended because he wanted Jesus to come and get him out of jail. And when Jesus didn't come and get him out of jail, John said, tell me, is he the one? Or shall we look for another? The disciples came back and said, we need to tell you something. He's the one. They say, how you know? He said, the blind are seeing. Huh? The deaf are hearing. The lame are walking and the dumb are talking. We're preaching, but ain't got no power. But God's about to raise up a people that's walking in. 
We need power. I don't care about your exegesis. Exegete this devil off my back. I don't care about your theology. Theologize this cancer that's trying to destroy my body. Because when I'm sick, I don't care about your message. Get some oil and lay hands on me and get the devil out of my house. Glory! Be seated, I'm coming. Be seated. Be seated. He said, in verse 6, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are what? That word speak there is halil. It means to speak, talk amongst them that are teleos again. He said there's a language that mature people talk in. Y'all ain't saying that. And he, you, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. He's telling you that the language of the mature is the miraculous. You missed that. When you a baby, I got to talk to you and talk to you. He say, but the mature folk say, just show up with power. And when you come with power, we know that's God talking. We need a revival of power. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Look down your own and say, we need a revival of power. I'm not talking about where the preacher is walking in it. I'm not talking about where only the fivefold is walking in it. I'm talking about when you come in here with a demon, you just shake hands with the person next to you. And they say, whatever was on, you got to come up off of you. I'm talking about our babies casting out demons. Prophesy to your neighbor, say, there's a visitation coming to your children. You are talking to a Presbyterian, find somebody with power and tell them there's a visitation about to come to your children. There's a move of God about to hit this land. There's a glory about to come in the church where we're going to walk in. First Corinthians 3, hurry up, sit down, sit down. I'm coming. I'm done, I think. And our brethren, I couldn't talk to you spiritual, but I had to talk carnal, even as unto what? Verse 2, come on, come on. And I fed you with what? Not with what? For hitherto you were not able to what? Neither yet now are ye able. Still ain't grew up. Next verse. Why? For ye are yet what? How you know you carnal? Here you go. For whereas there is among you what? Come on. Come on. Are ye not? And walk as? You know how I know you carnal? Envious. You know how I know you carnal? You got people you don't like. I don't do her. I just can't get along with her. That's because you're full of the devil. I won't tell your mama and daddy won't tell you, but God sent you here tonight to learn. You walk as men. You're a babe. And because you're a babe, you walk and talk as men. But when you mature, you no longer operate as a man. Because you're mature. Am I making sense? So you got to be fed with milk. When am I going to get healed? When, when God going to bring me out? Pastor, would you just pray for me about this? Because I'm still fighting the same thing. Would you pray for me? Because uh, a witch riding my back. Pray for me because somebody put a hex on me. You're so powerless. You think I'm scared of a witch. If that witch don't mess, if she don't leave me alone, she's going to die. Because I suffer not a witch to live. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared of a witch. I'm scared of a witch. 
Be careful of her. Don't, don't. I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. Can't eat food from everybody because people serve your food. If I want it, and it's good. I don't care how good she cook. Your food don't make me want you. I'm going to eat your food and still ain't going to marry you. Ain't no food that good. But I ain't going to turn them greens down. I'm going to eat them greens if they good. Can't put nothing on me to make me want you. Ain't no magic that good. No weapon formed against me. Come to maturity. Come to maturity. But you got to be fed milk because you can't handle meat. You see her catching the flu. How you caught it? You should have killed it. How about shot? Man named John G. Lake was overseas. The bubonic plague was killing everybody. John G. Lake said, put it in my hand. They put a microscope of the bubonic plague. They, they put a microscope of COVID. They put a microscope of the bubonic plague. They put a microscope of COVID. They put a microscope of the bubonic plague. It was killing everybody. It was destroying everybody. But John G. Nook Lake, though he had something in him, he said, greater, 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 greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. When they put the germ in his hand and put the microscope up to his hand, when the germ hit his hand, it died. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mother. Say, I am powerful. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You ain't got no business catching nothing. Sooner they hit you, it should die. Soon as it come on, you say, you better leave me alone now. You got to start talking to it. When you feel that cold trying to come, what you doing here? When that congestion come, I don't, you don't belong here. See, y'all don't talk to stuff like that. You got a headache. You still calling on Jesus, asking God to heal your headache. He already healed your headache. When did he heal your headache? When did he heal your headache? When did he heal your headache? 2,000 years ago. By his stripes, you were healed. You still going, Lord, would you heal me of this condition? Would you heal me of that? You ain't got no business doing that. Maturity things change. You don't play with it. Talk to it. Sickness hit you, say, out. I just felt that for somebody. I don't know what demon been tormenting you, what infirmity been messing with your body, but in the name of Jesus, I command it to dry up right now. Somebody say body. body. With confidence, talk to your body. Don't just say it because I'm telling you to say it. Talk to your body and say body. body. Be, healed. Be healed. Now. now. Say every virus, every, virus. every infection, infection. loose me, me now. When you understand that, don't nothing move you no more. Don't nothing shake you no more. Because you know that a thousand shall fall at one side. 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come now yet. But you know why it hasn't become real to you? Can I have five more minutes? You know why? It's complication. You know why? You know why it hasn't become real to you? Because you don't meditate. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you're going to do what? 
Meditate on it when? A lot of folk read, but not many people meditate. Paul said, take a hold of the truth and make it yours. Mm -hmm. He said that in the script. He said, don't just say it. Say it till it becomes yours. Yeah. Say it till when you say you heal, you know you heal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Say, my mind is strong. My mind is strong. Say, my body, is fit. my body is fit. You see that supernatural weight loss happening right now? See how you don't believe, see, your faith, see, y'all don't believe that. It's fine. You ain't got to believe, but it's real. Look down your road and say, I'll take all of that in Jesus' name. Are y'all listening to me? See, when you get a revelation of who you are, I'm coming. I, I got a lot to do. But when you got a revelation of who you are, again, I, I can preach to you and shout you. I know a lot of y'all are here. You, you, you want to see me flow and move in the spirit, and, and, and we will. I, I, I'm not in a rush. Okay? Ain't in a rush. Amen. Amen. You don't rush the beautician. You don't rush that eyelash lady. And I know, I know you got you some eyelashes. You don't rush the beautician, the nail tech. They want to come in here and put a time limit on me. You don't rush the doctor. Come on, talk back to me in here. You get an appointment for the doctor and the doctor tell you what time to get there. And the time you get there, he don't even call you. But guess what you do? Wait. Well, you going to wait now. You see, now see, when you get a revelation, somebody shout, I know, I, am. I know who I am. Would you say that with a little confidence? Would you say with power, I know who I am? I know who I am. Would you tell that to somebody around you? Tell them, I know who I am. I know who I am. You're still not saying it strong enough. I don't hear it in the spirit yet. See, I know who I am. I know who I am. See, I ain't got to take no mess. I ain't take no mess. See, when you get a revelation of who you are and you get a bad report, or you get a revelation of who you are and the job tell you something bad. Or you get a revelation of who you are and you go to the hospital or you in school and they're going to tell you bad stuff to you. You don't get discouraged. You go home, shut the door and say, I heard what they said, but I'm going to ship this thing right now. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm the seed of Abraham. I refuse to die. I refuse to go under. I refuse to lose my mind. I refuse to go out like this. I want all my stuff. Somebody shout, I know who I am. Now when you, when you in that room, you can fight in the spirit. You can look rough. You can look ugly. You can go crazy. You can cry as much as you want to. You can pout as much as you want to because you're warring in the spirit. But when you come out that room, you're walking like a lady. You're walking like a gentleman. You don't let nobody see you crying. You ain't talking back to me in here. And somebody say, well, what do you do when you go in the room and pray? And then you come out the room and it looked like it got worse. Guess what you do? Keep on believing God. The Bible say Abraham staggered not at the promise. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Shake your neighbor and say, I believe God. I believe. God say I believe God I believe God say I believe God I believe God but he was strong in faith giving glory to God lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost right now come on you're too low you're too low you're too low Somebody shout, I'll never be defeated. Be seated. Heard the story. Heard the story of a man who had a daughter. And the daughter's name was Michelle. 
a lady, I'm sorry. And the daughter's name was Michelle. Had a sickness. Five-year-old daughter. And she was believing God for her daughter healing. But guess what the daughter did? Died. And when the daughter died, she didn't give up. They said, how your daughter? She said, my daughter's well. Looked like I read that in the Bible somewhere. Woman had a son who was sick and had died and they asked her, how you doing? And guess what her response was? It's well. I need you to look at somebody and say, it's well. Don't know where I'm going to get this money from, but it's well. Don't, don't know how this thing going to turn, but it's well. Don't know what God doing. I don't understand it, but tell somebody it's well. She didn't cry. She didn't get depressed. She didn't get sad. She didn't get despondent. She didn't start grieving. She spoke to that daughter. She said, Michelle, come back. Because I said you are well. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Michelle act like she wasn't listening. She grabbed Michelle's body. And say, I told you to wake up. I dare you to take a hold to your children that's acting crazy. And say, I command you to be saved. Fit, y'all ain't talking back to me in here. I dare you to grab your pocket book and say, I command you to be full of money. Shout if you believe increase coming to you. Speak to it. Got work to do. You leaving out of here change. You leaving out of here different. But the reason you leaving out of here different is you ain't going to be dependent on me. You going to get a revelation of who you are. And I come to tell you, I don't care how bad your business is. Call it back to life. I don't care what your son doing right now. Arrest him in the Holy Ghost. Somebody show my life changing right now. All things. Work together. For the good. Tell somebody. I love God. And I am the called. According to his purpose. Tell somebody, I belong to God. You act like you don't believe that. And because I belong to him, it got to work for my good. Maybe you don't understand what it's like to be going through look like you prayed all night long fasted and believed God but ain't nothing changed on your behalf but I heard the Bible declare they that wait upon the Lord he he shall renew he gonna renew your strength you're going to mount up with wings like an eagle. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, this thing got to shift. You act like you're scared to say it. Grab your somebody that look like they got a little power in their voice. Grab your somebody who look like they've been through the storm. Grab your somebody whom the devil has tried to kill. And say, neighbor, God told me to tell you it got to work for your good. I don't care what kind of battle you're in. I don't care what situation you're going through. I don't care 
when the doctors have told you the devil is a liar speak with authority take your position beloved now are we the sons of God turn up my mic in the monitors and it does not yet appear what we shall be but when he shall appear we're gonna be like him grab somebody rock them and shake them shake them and rock them and say neighbor I'm here today not cause I'm perfect I'm here today not cause I did everything right but I'm here because there's a word on my life and that word says that if God be for me who can be against me I'm preaching to somebody that's been in a rough patch I'm speaking to somebody that's been fighting a demon of depression I'm speaking to somebody that pressed your way to convocation all kind of battles tried to block you all kind of stuff tried to keep it from coming but you told the devil not another year will I live like this I'm ready to get everything that God has promised me somebody shall glory shall glory shout it another time you need to tell your neighbor things are about to change things are about to shift whatever you're going through it's about to turn for you there's power when I open my mouth death and life is in the palm of your tongue you don't like where you are speak to it speak to the cancer speak to the sugar speak to the arthritis speak to your son speak to your money speak to your mind speak to your future I'll never be defeated I'll never go crazy I'll never lose my mind shake somebody's hand shake it real good shake it shake 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 somebody's hand you act like you scared to shake it shake it until they get agitated shake it until they get angry shake it until you get on their nerve and say neighbor God told me to tell you be not dismayed Whatever be tied, God will, God will, God will, he gonna take care of you. This thing got to change. This thing got to shift. I can't live like this. I can't be like this. Another year, something got to break. Tell somebody it got to break. But guess what? It's breaking right now. Chains are breaking. Demons are coming out. Somebody's getting free. Somebody getting delivered. Somebody getting healed. Somebody getting a breakthrough. Get out your seat. Run the seven people as they get ready, get ready. Get together he's gonna cause men 
to give unto my bosom. This is my season. I'm a tither and I'm glad about it. I'm a giver and I'm glad about it. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world because I am a giver. I expect increase. Oh, all the days of my life. Y'all don't remember? Father, grant unto me rebates, refunds, money in the mail, unexpected checks, increase in every area, stocks, dividends, bonds, exchanges, real estate, contracts, lawsuits, settlements for my good. My name is in somebody's will. God is talking to somebody about me and giving me favor from uncommon people in uncommon places. What's next? Another day in my life. I am a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Call it, call it, call it, call it. Money, coming. Go get your money. Go get your prosperity. Go get, go get your deliverance. Run the three people and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. I am here. I am delivered. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am a lender and not a borrower. Shake somebody and say it's changing. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. Turn in my favor. It's turning. 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 Wait. Wait. You are. Powerful. With confidence, tell somebody where I am is not my destiny. I want you to lay hands on yourself, and I hope this gets your spirit. But lay hands on your belly and say, there has to be more. You didn't save me to struggle. You could have left me in the world if you wanted me to struggle. But you saved me to be your mannequin. Can't be your mannequin broke. Now show me off, Jesus. I don't care how bad your situation is, you can change it. And most of you get discouraged because you speak to it and it don't look like it changed. But the Bible said Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 
When he got the bad report, he started praising God. When it started looking contrary, he started praising God. Look at five people around you and tell them, your situation has changed. Look at somebody else and say, expect an overflow of increase to hit your life before July is over. You have what you say. For the next three minutes, hold on my shot. For the next three minutes, I want you to talk to whatever's in your life that's out of order. It must obey you. Somebody say, it must obey me. Trees can hear. Money can hear. Sickness can hear. Did you know that arthritis got a knee? Cancer got a knee? High blood pressure got a knee? But at the name of Jesus? Every knee must bow. Andola Cosa. There's a man in the back, you bald head. Your wife is next to you with a hat on, and uh, I don't know if it's orange or what, whatever color that is. Join hands. There are two young men heavy on your heart. God told me to tell you I'm about to arrest both of them. Don't have to worry. They're going to help you. And whatever you need them to take over, I'm training them to do it now. The Lord told me to tell you, I'm going to get a hold of your boys. And I'm going to fill them again with the Holy Ghost. And they'll take over the ministry. Now shout, hey. That's what I heard. Okay, scream. Scream. I feel the anointing. Hey. Somebody shall glory. God, I want you for the next two minutes. We're getting ready to speak to some stuff. We're going to command it to change because you have what you say and I don't care how rough it gets I don't care how bad it gets hold on to what God said and tell that thing it must obey you somebody shout it must obey you Say it again, it must, it must obey you. Woman in the back, you got the red scarf on covering your head. Lift your hands. You. Put both of your hands on the lower part of your back. You won't need no back surgery after tonight. Come get up here. Come up here. Come here. Come on. God's giving that woman a miracle. told me, whatever your sister had, you ain't gonna die with it. Ah, hey, he's a curse breaker. You act like you can. Your praise is too low. You gotta learn how to participate in other people's prophecy. You got, uh, you got, uh, is that Paisley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift your hands. God told me to tell you this is going to be a season of reward for you. Listen to me. You've been faithful when seemingly nobody sees what you're doing. 
And you've always been the one to say, I'm not going to prostitute the gift God's given me. An opportunity came for you to play. Play, that's what I heard. Play. 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 Come here. Come to me. Something fresh about to come on him. I just heard play. Come here. Get up here. Run. Run, run. Wait. Lift your hands. The favor of God going to rest on you. But God calls you his David. You're a man after my own heart. I'm going to bless you. And what your father didn't accomplish, you're going to accomplish. There's some things he should have accomplished, but it was a lid put on him. But God said, you're going to be the lid remover. When I lay hands on you, I can't do it now. I can't do it now. Give me that instrument. Come here. Make sure it's plugged into the speaker because I Hey. Keep playing that sound. You know what to do with that? You know what to do with that? Devil can't stop this. Come on, come on. As you play, a fresh anointing. As you play, a fresh anointing comes on you, and you are never, 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 never. This is your season to be rewarded. Somebody shout for his reward. Hey, the spirit of truth is in the house. Lift your hands and worship. Hey, lift your hands. See what you need. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The presence of Jesus. The command of the Lord to share it. The command of the Lord to share it. Rock of the Lord to share it. A fresh anointing. your moment. Get what you need right now. Get what you need. Tell them come back. Come here. I was going to put you on the keys, but I heard the Holy Ghost say put them on the guitar. Now, go home, you and your wife. Put your plans together. Find you an architect. Build your house. The studio going to be in it. Hey, 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 hey. Now somebody shout. Come on, lift your hands and pray. 
you can't hide. He called you. He called you. But you've been through so much disappointment in ministry that the devil wants you to run away from it. But you can't run. You are chosen. Woe be unto you if you preach not the gospel. May a fresh anointing overtake you. May the power of God invade your life. May you never be the same again. Somebody scream for the encounter. That the Palmer, you'll never, never be the same. Hey, Emma, the anointed of you. Look down your row and tell them everything changes. Now, the song of the Lord is here. The dance of the Lord is here. But I'm not talking about churchy dance like we usually do. With that temple right now, there needs to be a dance of victory that comes in your feet. If you if you got to tell somebody on your road, get out my way. I need some space. But there's a there's a there's a dance in the spirit that's getting ready to loose you into a place that yellow shiba. Lift your hands. You was next to the musician. You. Both of them. You look at me. God said, I'm not going to tell you no more. Do what I say. And it may not be popular. And it may cause you to cut some things off. And cut some people off. But if you walk alone in this season. You've not seen the magnitude to which heaven. Shall cause an anointing to increase upon you. And I'm talking about a, an anointing especially. For those who are demon possessed. God's going to give you an anointing to lay hands on folk. That's been bound by alcohol, bound by drugs and addiction. And God said, you're going to be able to reach them when can't nobody else reach them. But the Spirit of God says that he's healing you. He's healing you in your body. There's something you've been going through personally. You ain't shared with nobody. But it's a certain part of your body that only men can go through. You've been having them sharp pains. You're healed today. You do not have prostate cancer. You are healed. Hey! 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 There's a, we about to do a dance in here in the spirit. There's a woman way in the back. You got on glasses, a white thing around your head, green dress. You, lift your hands. I don't know what this is, but something was taken from you. It's like an inheritance of something you were supposed to receive. 
But I saw you fight with your family and fighting with some people over a possession that belongs to you. The Spirit of God told me to tell you that that fight is over. Not only that, not only that, somebody, well, just come up here. Get up here. Bring her through the middle. Bring her through the middle. Stop it right there. Stop it right there. Stop, 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 stop. Lift your hands, baby. You. 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 Yeah, lift your hands. Say I'm happy. Say that again. Say it again. I'm going to say it till it gets your spirit. Say it again. Say it again. Come on. Yeah, it's going to break. Come on. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Because you were locked up in your room crying the other day, saying, I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. But you ain't sick no more. You happy. You happy. You happy. You happy. Hey, he going to marry you and he going to love you. Hey, that's what God said. You going to be happy. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to walk you through this. I saw a little girl run out your stomach. Okay. Now, do you have a daughter? Okay, I thought so. I'm going to minister to that little girl who was taken advantage of. And because of what you went through, your life is stuck. How old are you? 23 but I'm telling you psychologically because of that trauma you went through you stuck at nine well come to me I'm going to get all of it out there's a cry finna come out of her there's a cry finna come out of her Somebody scream because there's a cry about to come out of it. Lift your hand. Let it go. Let it go. Today is your... is waiting on. I don't know what kind of business you want to start, but God's going to put all the resources in your hand so that you'll be able to start it. But I want you to listen to me. You got to stop putting your life on hold to make everybody else happy. You have pushed everybody else, supported everybody else, but not God said it's your time. This is your season to walk in the blessing of God because God want to use you. He want to use you in dreams and visions. He want to show you things at nighttime. And when you wake up, use you as an intercessor to pray for people. And their lives change because of your prayer and your intercession. But I minister to you because something happened when you was a child and you saw some abuse and it really affected you and hindered your ability to really be able to love somebody completely because you don't want to let nobody hurt you like you saw the stuff your mama and grandma and all of them go through. But God God told me to tell you, there will be no repeat of that in your life. Not only that, God's healing your body. Ha! He's going in your ovaries. He's making you whole. Whatever that cyst is, it's dried up. You ain't going to have that no more. He's making you whole, and he's giving you a new thyroid. Hey, somebody, praise him. Yeah. He's a 
just gave that woman a new thyroid. Hey, he just gave that woman a brand new thyroid. Hey, look at three people that say, you next, you next. All right, listen. Now, there's a dance that we got to do in the spirit. And it's going to loose you into another place. There are 50 people that's going to bring me $200 in a minute. I'm waiting on the thing to open in the spirit. There are 50 of you going to do it. I don't think you're going to do it. I ain't praying about whether you're going to do it. You don't do it. That's fine. You know, I ain't going to beg you. I ain't going to ask you a million times. I'm just going to tell you what I believe the Lord has challenged me to say. Ale ke shele kosula felendele sololodiyasha shalamashando obi okosa han falenini minone me kukan kalama kakasa. Look at me. Lift your hand. Now listen. I want you to sell out the God. I'm talking about sell out completely. I'm talking about sell out so much that you tell him he can't stay at your house no more. I want you to sell out until you make them mad. Until you say, uh-uh, I'm not doing that no more. Because God's going to do a new thing in my life. God's going to put a yes in your belly. And he's going to give you power to tell the devil no. When I lay hands on you, there's a fresh anoint. Y'all better scream because the power. Hey, hold up. Shake it. Hey. I got a lot coming to me. You'll never be the same. He gonna give you power. He gonna give you power. He gonna give you power to tell the devil no. He gonna give you power to shut the mouth of the gainsayer. He gonna shanda. Look at somebody say power's coming down your road. Now listen to me. Listen to me. There's a dance that you got to do in the spirit that's going to set you free. Who you came with? No, 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 right here. Right here. Your grandma, that's your grandson. Now I'm going to pray for you because the devil want you locked up a long time. But I said we can change it. Amen. Go in that middle aisle. Go in the middle aisle. Grandma, you won't have no more problems out of them when I get done. Stand right there. Stand right there. Back up, son. Back up, son. Back up, son. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Come here, Grandma. God won't use you. You hear me? I'm serious. Lift your hand. God want to use you, and God going to use you. But Satan desires to have you. I want to destroy your life. I want you to follow the footsteps of the men before you. I want you locked up, but I'm talking about a long time. And there's already been some stuff that God has got you out of already that you got into because of the crowd you was hanging with. But I'm going to lay hands on you. When I lay hands on you, I don't want you to slam another door. I don't want, look at me, look at me, don't look down, look at me. I don't want you to slam another door. I don't want you to catch another attitude. 
I don't want you to go back and forth with no mama, no grandma, none of that. When they ask you to do something, I want you to do it. Because God's going to favor you. Look at me, look at me, look at me, don't look down. I know this robe look good, but don't look at the robe, look at me. I know it's hard, amen. But God going to use you. Now hear me good. Hear me real good what I'm about to say to you. How are you here? 17. That's a good age. God going to arrest you. God going to arrest you. Now hear me good. And you come back and tell me when this happened. But I want you to change your surroundings. It's two young men specifically that you like to hang with. He's smiling now and God got in his business. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, he said, mm -hmm. if you walk away, you won't follow their path. They going to jail. They going to jail. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They going to jail. But not so with you. Because you got a praying grandmama. And your grandma got a praying pastor. I cover you. Hey. Somebody shout. There's a dance. We're going to do a dance and we got to go. But there's a dance you're going to have to do that's getting ready to break some stuff off of you and put you in a new place. Are you ready? Look down your road. Say, I'm ready. Say, 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 don't look at me funny. But I got to do this dance because there's a dance going on in heaven. Dance. Come on, do it. Hey, come on. Hey, do something. Hey. one there are 49 people in this room there are 49 people in this room I don't thank you here I know you here if you don't want to do it don't do it but there are 49 people whether you're giving by cash check credit card no one move if you don't have to one has already done it soon as you get it, just come lay it at the altar. There's one. There's two. There's three. 
four. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm waiting on you. Twenty-one. 22, 23, 24. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. Was that 25 or 26? I don't know. That was 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Come. Is there another? Thank you, Lord. 31. Can you put the ways to give on the screen? 32. 33. 35. Come. Thank you, Lord. 36. Thirty-seven. Thank God. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Forty. Forty-one. Forty-two. Forty-three. Amen. Praise God. Watch, watch it. Power of God, baby, take that. Amen. You can ask him when you get up. Over 40 something, yeah, I guess. Where we at? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else come and come? Okay, man, what you saying? You can pick up. What you say in that? Um, she said, do we take cash out? Well, <laughs> I mean, I take cash out. <laughs> you only got your card. You're, okay, but you can fill out the envelope. You, you want one? We're going to get you one. Be healed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Clap those hands for Jesus. How you doing? Okay. Oh, well, I want I want to pray for you first. You mind if I pray for you? You love it. I would love it. What happened? Did you have a stroke? Yes, sir. How long ago? Uh, 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. And I guess it affected the. Okay. Do you ever talk to it? You pray on it. Well, do you talk to it? No. You just pray on it. You don't talk to it. You know it could hear you. You ain't know that? Now you know. What's your name? Uh, Don Burris. Tom. Donald. Donald. Uh -huh. Okay. I want you for the next seven days to talk to your body. Talk to this arm and talk yes. to that leg. Because it gotta, you have what you say, right? In the name of Jesus. I speak to the part of the brain 
that was affected by the stroke. I command feeling to come back to this body. Heal in the name of Jesus. I curse this paralysis. And I command life to come to this right leg, life to come to this right arm, and life to come to these hands. I command them to stretch forth, and I command life. I need y'all to shout it here. We speak to it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, I command him to be made whole. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. That's right, that's right. Now in the name of Jesus, I command strength to come in his leg. I command his mobility to come back. I command his mobility to come back. I command his mobility to come back. Come back now. Leg, you must obey the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I command strength to come to your right leg. Right leg, listen to me. Right leg, obey me. I said, obey me. I said, obey me. I said, obey me. I want you to start walking. We're going to walk. Come on. Let's walk. I said, obey me. I command strength come to this leg. Straighten up. Straighten up, I said. Straighten up, I said. Straighten up. Uh -uh. I want you flexible. I want you flexible, there it is. I want you flexible. I want you, come on, life, 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 ah, uh, life. I want this leg straight. I speak to it. I speak to it. I speak to it. Tell him, come in. Donald, Donald, for the next seven days, I got some oil in the back I'm going to give you for the next seven days. Who you live with? Uh, I live with, family. with your family? Yes. Your wife? She not here though, right? Okay. I want you to give your wife this oil. And I want you to tell her the man of God said, rub down your arm, yes. your hand, and your legs for the next seven days. And in the name of Jesus, I command life to come back to you. In Jesus' name. sick and body be healed. Healed. I love you so much. I command his for the next set. You see this? Take this home with you, okay? You're going to put it in your pouch. In your pocket. Yes. Got any money down there? <laughs> Got, a little bit. Got a little bit. All right, hold it tight now. Look like you ain't. Envelope. You need an envelope? Yes, sir. Okay, he want envelope. He want to get some money. He won't use his card. All right. 
Amen. Well, you are blessed tonight. I say you are blessed tonight. I say you are blessed tonight. I say you are blessed tonight. In the morning, we have Apostle Dana Carson. I don't want none of you to miss it who can be here. Press your way. Get here in the morning. God used him in a powerful way to minister to me a couple of uh, weeks ago. I was blessed in a powerful way. I boo cried in his service. I want you to come and receive what God has for us in the morning at 10 o'clock. I believe God has a word that's going to change our lives. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for what God's. Ma'am in the back with the short hair. In the back back there. I'm pointing at you. You turn around, look around. Yes, ma'am. You. Lift your hand. No, not you, Aisha. I know your name. What you got your hands? You know, I know I know your name. <laughs> your hands like I'm talking to her. She know I know her name. <laughs> Ooh, thanks, I'm there. You. Come here. Hallelujah. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right. Koshaba. Bow my head. I lift my hands. I bow my I worship. I need, Lord. I need you, Lord. Everybody say, Hallelujah, God. Right. Yes, Lord. Everybody lift your hands and say, I need you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give it to him. Yes, Lord. I need you, Lord. Need you, Lord. Right. Lift both hands and worship him. Say, I need you, Lord. Come on, say I lift my hand. seed too big, no seed too small. When an anointing comes like this and God visits us, we should always come and give some kind of offering. Amen. Amen. Try that again. Amen. Amen. I want everybody to get something in your hand. I don't care what it is. Cash, credit, card, check, whatever. As soon as you get it, lay it at the altar right now. Come, come, come. Whatever it is. Somebody left your phone up here. Come on, baby. Come. 
Halama Sikiosha E Commando La Hosia Gila La Lapa. Come, come, bring whatever you have. Whatever you have. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now, I lift my hand. I lift my hand. Bow my knees. Bow my knees. I worship. I worship and glory. I need you, Lord. Listen. Service starts at 10. Tomorrow when? Tomorrow Thursday. Right? Okay. What's that noise? Amen. All right. Tomorrow, service starts at 10, 10 to 12. All my brothers were having a men's fellowship at 1230. Who they need to see, Joy? What's this, Joy? I'll see you at the welcome table. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me. You're going to be here all week, right? Okay, don't tell me nothing. I don't want to know nothing. Let, let the Lord tell me your business. He's going to make sure I talk to you. You make sure you want something on the head. I could see you, didn't I? I got you. I said covered. Amen. Amen. All the brothers, I want you, all brothers, all brothers, I want you to be a part of this fellowship we're doing tomorrow at 1230. Go in the back. There'll be a table. We want you to register for it so you can be a part of it. Women, you have a service tomorrow at 1230, the women's service. I want all of you to come and be a part of that. It should be no longer than an hour, hour and a half at the most. Okay? Amen. Amen. All right. Then, of course, we have uh, whatever in the morning. Stand on your feet. Let's get out of here. Need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right. Praise his name. Praise his name. Everywhere. Praise his name. Oh, praise his name. Allah Kosha. Praise. Praise his name. Praise. Everybody, come on. Lift your hands and say, Praise his name. Amen. Praise. There's plenty of food. Thank God I'm, I'm, I'm closing late. So you can't go eat nowhere else in Jesus' name. I want to make sure all restaurants were closed in Jesus' name. 
I already told you if you try to go somewhere else, you're going to get the runs. So listen, I want you to, uh, what's today, Wednesday? They got fried chicken, baked chicken, smothered turkey wings, yams, mac and cheese, dressing, potato salad, greens. Is that greens? Greens and rice. Plenty of food back there. Lift those hands. Tomorrow, as soon as you wake up, command your morning. Command your day. Speak to your future. And it shall be as you have said. I declare this will be one of the greatest years of my life. Amen. Amen. Brothers, I would love to fellowship with you again. Go in the back, sign up. All the ladies, there's a service of tomorrow, 1230. But I want everybody who can be here to be here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Apostle Dana Carson is coming. They got eight earned degrees and wrote, wrote over 200 books just on the kingdom alone. So it's just excellent writer, just great man. And we're just ready to receive everything God has for us. You are blessed. You are favored. And I command you to be hungry. In Jesus' name.